Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, we have the latest update on the Elite's AEW contracts. We've got a huge change to SummerSlam. A former WWE and Impact name has joined AEW. And why is WWE changing all the belts? Because they're silly. I'm Andy. That's Phil. And this it's is the Rikishi, news. Actually, <laughs> Sorry. Phil Fatu bringing you the scoops here on a, what day is it? Thursday morning. <laughs> there we go. Hey, enjoy Brian Cage dressed as Sting as well. Why the heck not? Yeah. Um, do you want an update on the Elite? I do, yeah. What's going on with their contracts? Obviously, this has been the subject of some speculation. Okay, you, le you left one of the legs with you. <laughs> Fair play. Um, <laughs> what's going on with him? Uh, wait, there's, there's four people in the Elite. It's not a him. <laughs> is it there's a lot more to this. Yeah, the Elite is not a human being. <laughs> um, their futures have been the subject of some speculation lately because the contracts are coming up at various states and the guy they had a fight with <laughs> all out is back and it's all a bit complicated. But Fightful Select have come through with this report noting that both sides, that being the Elite and AEW, have been of the belief that agreements are close at various points throughout this. Now one source has noted that this has been applicable for a while, so it's not necessarily anything new, but it's the first time we are learning of it, so it's the first time you guys are learning of it as well. Um, AEW is confident of retaining Hangman Page, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, um, and their contracts are due to expire in the not too distant future. Now, AEW's confidence hasn't been hurt by the impending return of CM Punk, who of course is back this week on Collision. Um, and yeah, they don't think that's gonna impact their ability, it seems, to, to retain the elite. Uh, now, ascertaining when these people's contracts come up is very difficult because there are things like year options that have been activated. There are timeout through injury, which is particularly applicable for Kenny Omega. So who knows, but they are coming up and they are in negotiations. But it does sound like things are trending in the right direction. It's noted that WWE is understood to be interested in picking up the elite because of course they are. <laughs> like, <laughs> even from a standpoint of taking some of Tony Khan's Toys I was going to say, they just do it just to spite Tony Khan. Yeah, else. exactly. There's so many levels to why they would be interested. Um, however, company sources don't think they'll be able to make the jump uh, with WWE are currently nowhere near being legally able to approach them either. So it looks like things are trending towards the elite staying in AEW. Uh, which is quite interesting with CM Punk pacing these hallways. It is indeed, yeah. We'll have to wait and see how it boils out with the whole like brand split kind of thing. But it is all elite wrestling at yeah. the end of the day. You kind of want to keep on hold of four of your absolute top stars. But hopefully they've all got a massive pay bump out of this yeah. at least. They've got themselves paid thanks to CM Punk, I assume. Oh, imagine. Uh, <laughs> so that'll be a nice little thing to make CM Punk angry if they get like massive, massive pay bumps because he was a bit of a twat. <laughs> yeah, imagine if they got paid like a dollar more than him. That's what I would negotiate. <laughs> that would be a good spike if, deal. Exactly. Like if I'm Kenny Omega, I'm walking in going, what's Return Phil on? Else. I want a dollar more. Just <laughs> flawless. And rub it in his face. So petty. You love to see <laughs> just it. accidentally drop your contract on the floor in front of him. Oh, sorry, Phil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what can you possibly do? But yeah, I'm the same. I'd like to see the elite stick around. I think they're fundamental yeah. to AEW's identity. But hey, let us know what you guys think. Do you want to see them jump to WWE? Do you think they do well over there? Or should they stick around? Can they avoid bumping into Phil Brooks in the hallway? They can try. Can Kenny Omega's arm avoid Ace Steel's jaw, allegedly? <laughs> Let us know. Can Punk's dog avoid the door? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Larry, man. <laughs> uh, but moving over to WWE. Uh, and SummerSlam is obviously coming up in Detroit this year. And there's been some few changes backstage that might be being made to SummerSlam itself. Now, this is coming from Boozer on Twitter, at Boozer Wrestling. Um, and he's basically saying that there's thinking of putting like NXT matches on the show, not only NXT matches, but NXT title matches on the show, and around two of them now. This isn't confirmed in any way, uh, in any, any way, just in any way. Uh, but you would imagine that that would be the top two titles in NXT. Yeah. The men's title and the women's title, Carmelo Hayes and Tiffany Stratton. Um, but it's interesting to note that this never has happened on, Sm on SummerSlam ever before. The only time yeah. I've ever got close to having an NXT talent on SummerSlam itself was in 2015 when Sasha Banks was the NXT Women's Champion, but then she dropped the belt to Bailey at a, a little takeover at Brooklyn the night before. Um, so yeah, never had an NXT 
like superstar on the main roster SummerSlam and it'd be an interesting mix up but definitely fits in with everything that WWE are doing with the kind of crossover of the main roster in NXT at the minute obviously with loads of main roster people kind of going down to NXT for little stints so it could be an interesting shake up. Yeah like the lines are definitely blurring uh, they called up 4 million people in the draft Yep. and since then we've seen a bunch of people go back down well I say down go over to NXT like your Mustafa Ali your Baron Corbins yep. Seth Rollins is going to fight Braun Breaker so they go like he doesn't get much of a bigger crossover <laughs> than the you know than, than those two uh unless like roman reigns was fighting daba kato or someone like that <laughs> uh, but yeah it, i would like to see it i mean i think i've always been in favor of like nxt showcases on main roster shows uh particularly a show as huge as SummerSlam, like the second or third biggest wwe show of the year um yeah, I'm all for it. It's just good to showcase talented people and also give, get the main roster audiences a chance to like get to know people before Absolutely, they eventually yeah. come up. And someday. introduce a new audience to NXT, which they kind of did a little bit. Like they've had NXT yeah. matches on WrestleMania and they did the Survivor Series thing that one year and then never bothered doing it again. Yeah, <laughs> it was a hot year as well. It was, a good it was year. just it was a really, really good, good year. Really, really good SummerSlam. So it's so surprising yeah. they haven't done more of this in the past to try and move more eyeballs over to NXT. But no, it's, yeah, good that they're putting that little platform yeah. on it right now. I subscribe to the idea that this is a good idea and you guys should subscribe to the channel as well. Hey, look at that. Look Thank at you so much you. for doing so, by the way. Clicking that button, staying the far. We do this nonsense every day. It's a fun time. Um, speaking of fun times, Hello. Uh, AEW have acquired someone who used to be in WWE and Impact and Ring AEW of Honor. They do like acquiring They, they do be acquiring, <laughs> don't they? Uh, it's Jimmy Jacobs. Uh, he's come in to join AEW's creative team. He is wrapped up with Impact, which is where he was before. Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer has confirmed this, so have Fightful Select. I don't quite know which report came first, so apologies. Than, you can both have a credit. Yeah, Credits for everyone. Everybody gets a credit. <laughs> We're sharing it around. Uh, so Jacobs is in. He's on AEW's creative team. They're obviously building something creatively at the moment with the way that's structured. Will Washington came in recently. Brian Danielson's been doing a bunch of stuff. Clearly, Tony Khan just revamping things a little bit creatively, which can only be seen as a positive thing. Yeah. Now, Jimmy Jacobs, I've been in Impact since 2017, so that's a long ass time. If you recall, Jimmy Jacobs is the chap who, when he was on WWE Creative, he took that selfie with uh, the Elite, or the Bullet Club, sorry, uh, including the Young Bucks and Hangman Page, outside an episode of Raw when they invaded in 2017. WWE fired him for that. He ended up in Impact. Whoops. <laughs> uh, if you know him as a wrestler, uh, it's probably from his Ring of Honor days. He was the leader of the Age of the Fall, which is, of course, the stable that really got Seth Rollins over when he was Tyler Black. Brody Lee was in that group as well. Uh, so yeah, there you go, new addition. I think that Tony Khan getting like people who will give him new ideas and argue with his ideas and like bounce stuff off of him, I think it's positive. Yeah, absolutely, any kind of shake up I think is necessary. He writes a hell of a lot of TV, yes. he does Tony Khan, and no one can do that much on their own. You need a little bit of help with these things and just having some people as a sounding board, even if it's just someone to bounce ideas off, um, get a bit of a back and forth, have a bit of a conversation about something rather than just you sat with a big white piece of paper trying to figure out what to do for eight hours of TV a week or whatever it is now. Um, so yeah, I think this is only a good thing. He's got a lot of experience that he brings to the team as well. Mm -hmm. So it should be good to see things shake up a little bit. Yeah, new ideas. Indeed. Good. Speaking of new ideas, uh, Triple H has been on one at the minute and WWE changing all of the WWE belts. And this is coming from Sports Illustrated that the man behind all of this is indeed Triple H. The quote is saying that he wants to uh, freshen up all the titles and present a new look. Um, obviously, at the same time, using it as an excuse to mix up the names of some of the titles, especially the women's ones that have been in desperate need of a change-up because the whole Raw and SmackDown thing gets really confusing when you insist on swapping the belts over to different brands every single year on the draft. Um, so that's obviously been changed, so Ask is now the uh, women's champion and Rhea Ripley's the women's world champion. Yeah. Um, although. Asuka's belt still says women's undisputed champion on it as well, doesn't it? They're like, confused, aren't they? I guess kind of ties into the Roman Reigns thing because he's got the undisputed tied championship and then Seth with the world heavyweight championship. There's a lot going on. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so it's all to present a new look, freshen things up a little bit. Um, obviously fix some of the issues with the Raw and SmackDown branding that wasn't really necessary. No word yet on if this is going to be happening um, with other belts going forwards. Obviously we've got the women's tag team title unification match between the NXT mm -hmm. uh, tag champs and um, the Shayna Baszler and uh, Ronda Rousey. Obviously that's coming up. Mm -hmm. So you'd expect something to change with that, whether they just drop the NXT belts and keep the women's ones because they're not that old. 
guess. Yeah, they've only been around a couple of years, yeah. really. Like yeah. They've mixed up the IC belt not that long ago, so that one might not get a change up, but hopefully the men's tag team ones, they definitely need a change up. Yeah. Because they've been ugly for a long ass time. They're and little pennies on yeah, a bit of leather. Bad yeah. little pennies. The more is Matt Down branding again. I think, again, you can do the similar thing with the women's title where it's like, that'll be a free roaming thing across mm -hmm. all the brands. Um, but I think it's a necessary little shake up. Freshens yeah. things up a little bit. Different aesthetics. Um, yeah, getting a championship over it onto Raw is obviously a good thing away from Roman Reigns. Um, so yeah, I like all this. Me too. And I think that it's a good that they've solved the women's singles title scene without doing a belt swap. Because yep. I thought that, that when this situation arose, I was like, oh, here we go again. Yep. And yet they have Awkward. swerved it, which they is have. good. Uh, so like it, it installs a degree of parity when you have similar titling conventions. You know, Roman Reigns was never the SmackDown world champion or whatever. Yep. Um, so yeah, like obviously Roman is going to be positioned as the big guy because he's undisputed. He's all of this. His belt is like the lineage of the world and universal titles, which all is like into one. yeah, it's everything from Bruno Sammartino to the present day yeah. uh, and Where even Seth's further is back. Just Seth. Yeah, <laughs> Seth. Seth, she's got it's just him, <laughs> which is good because he's good. But you know, uh, yeah, I'm in favor of the changes and. Uh, Yo, know, the, the, the belts are always going to have the massive logo on it now because it looks good on TV. Yep. Give it to a football team, you know what it is straight away. So the designs are what they are. You can love them, you can hate them, you can be somewhere in between. But, but you can let us know down in the comments what hey, you think either way. Two in one video. <laughs> doing it. Respect it. <laughs> right, let's move over to your questions today. We got these from the YouTube community. We'll be getting them from there tomorrow as well. So check that page out later on today if you want to get a question in for tomorrow. But the first one comes from Brian, just Brian. Uh, good day. Andy the Fiend and the current Willboard impersonator. That would be you. There he is. <laughs> Good job. Uh, how do you think CM Punk can win back the fans? I think he could start with an apology to the fans during the first collision. He's very lucky that the first show is in Chicago, isn't he? He is very lucky that the first show is in Chicago. Uh, so at least he'll have the home crowd welcome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I do think he needs to get on the mic and say something. It's like, I'm a, oh, I was almost a little bit disappointed that they announced a match for him on the first Yeah. Time. Because I think I'd be much more interested in just seeing, like, just saying CM Punk has a live mic. And that yeah. that would sell me on that show Mystery a lot more than elements. CM Punk in a six-way tag match yeah. thing, personally. Um, but I think the sooner they get him on a microphone, the better. Whether yeah. it's going to be on this first show, or whether they're going to hold it off to the second show, I don't know. But he needs to get on that mic. He, they need to explain what the direction is going forwards, I guess, is whether he's mm -hmm. a face or a heel. I guess he's coming back in Chicago, so he's likely to get a face reaction. But if you check out our video of what AEW fans really think of CM Punk, which I'll put a link up here, um, you can find out that AEW fans are mixed, to say the least, yeah. on this. A little bit. So he needs to be talking people back into that building and winning people over. But if anyone can do it on a microphone, it's old CM Punk. Yeah, absolutely. And. Uh... I do think a heel turn is in his future at some point. I don't yeah. know if you uh, pull that off in Chicago. He has said, what was the exact phrasing? I got a lot to get off my chest. I'm going to settle some scores. So he wants you to think that he's going to burn the universe down. Yeah. He's probably not going to do quite that. Yeah. Uh, but I'm looking forward to, whether it's good, bad, or somewhere in the middle, I am looking forward to the chaos. Yes, Bring absolutely. It Let's get there. Uh, second question today comes from Phil Haddock. Nice name. Uh, the captain who asks, morning legends, what do you guys look for in a match to make it a five star match? This is a really open ended question. My, my criteria is so simple. If I watch a match and I immediately go, that is one of the best matches I've ever seen, it's a five star match. If I even have the slightest question in my mind that maybe it's not, it's not. That's how I do it, really simple. Lots of people have different judging methods. So. I think that's fair. I think that's a good reasoning. Um, I think for me, it just has to make me feel something. Like I need, you need to lose yourself in it. Yeah. And then like once you get to that point where you don't realize you're watching wrestling anymore, which yes. is uh, difficult to do. Yeah. <laughs> like to get properly in when you watch like so much of it and like you're so involved and obviously in the job and everything like that. And just through wrestling fandom, you watch a lot of wrestling. Yeah. Um, so eventually when you get, when it really gets you in and you're fully get embraced in the moment, I think that's when, that's when it becomes five star for me. Yeah, I think that's like, these are really good criteria to have because like I don't like the idea of like having a tick box of like oh the yeah. technique was on, the finish was good, yeah, the, the comeback was uh, jolly. Yes, <laughs> yes, this uh, <laughs> specific kick out spot was uh, just on the money. Um, but hey, look, if you like breaking down wrestling that way, we're vibes guys, however. Yeah. We're vibes guys. Very not, much so. Not everything else. Uh, right, our final question of the day, very serious one, comes from Dante Martin. Not that Dante Martin. Uh, although he might be, you might be, might like, be you, never know. you might be chilling when he's injured, you know, sending yeah. in some questions. Uh, but this is Dante with an O. Uh, 
uh, who asks, which version of Bray Wyatt would you want to read you a bedtime story? <laughs> Ooh, which version? <laughs> I mean, they're all pretty creepy. They are all pretty creepy. None of them? Yeah. <laughs> the Fiend. I mean, the Fiend would just be weird. Yeah. Muscle Man, maybe? Might be a bit too energetic for bedtime. He'd keep you up, yeah. It's like, it, bedtime would turn into good morning, I think, with the Muscle Man. <laughs> this is true. Mr. Motivator. Ha! <laughs> Big Derek. I respect it. Um, Husky Harris, I don't know, I think he creeped me out a little bit as well. Probably yeah. Cult Leader Rocky Chair. I was chair. gonna go with Cult Leader in the end, I think. Yeah. I like the, how we've answered this as a shoot as yeah, well. Yeah, like the, the tones of his voice, I think it'd be like when you just listen to like a nature documentary or something to fall asleep, like it's just that it's like sort of monotone thing. Yeah, that you can just kind of lose yourself in and go, ah, uh, nice, fall asleep. And he's rocking. As long as the rocking chair doesn't squeak. Yeah, yeah off, that's like. it, like no squeaky rocking chair, but like a rocking back and forth generally, that kind of inspires a bit of sleep as well. So yeah, that's true. this turned into a really deep, in-depth <laughs> breakdown. Yeah. And hey, if you like deep, in-depth breakdowns and Hello. you enjoyed this video, you're probably going to enjoy this one right here as well. Thank you for watching today. I've been Andy. That's Phil. Yeah. Yep. Just finished it for you. Bye. See you later. <laughs> <laughs>